welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we're recording very late at night on the 4th of July. So the family festivities are over, did the hangout thing, did the fireworks thing, did the barbecue thing, but somebody's still got to record their daily videos for you, the adoring fans. And in honor of the 4th of July, we're running a Just Guy deck. And I'm sure I'm not going to be the only one making a video kind of like this. You'll get this a few days after the 4th of July anyway. So maybe it will be played out and you can't wait for more Just Guy shenanigans. But this is a, this is a little bit of a different list. Something of my own creation. Just to let all of you know, uh, if you're new to the channel or if you've been the, here a long time, sometimes I should state what I'm here for and what I'm about. This channel is dedicated to playing a different deck from Magic the Gathering Arena every single day. So every day, hopefully, you'll get a video with a fresh 60 to check out. And uh, sometimes I build those decks, and sometimes I find them on the internet and see something cool that I like and say, I absolutely have to play that. This is something I built up myself, uh, and the combo that I'm most curious about trying, because I at least from what I read it should work, is Blood Sun, which says when Blood Sun enters the battlefield, draw a card, all lands lose all abilities except mana abilities, and Lotus Field, which has abilities like Hexproof, enters the battlefield tapped, when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice two lands, and taps for three mana of any color. I am fine with it losing all those other parts. I'd prefer to keep Hexproof, but let's face it, lands don't get blown up quite as much as they did back in the early days. But uh, what we've got here is if it loses the ability that it enters the battlefield tapped, and if it loses the ability that when it enters the battlefield you have to sacrifice two lands, you just have straight up one mana, th one land, three mana. Excuse me, one land, three mana. And you can use all that mana to do fun things in Jeskai, like cast very large explosions on faces. Activate as Kanta a bunch of times, you know, cool stuff like that. Of course, the rest of the time we're running the eight to fairies because we're an evil control deck, and I'm sure some of you might hate on my Teferiness. I, I don't get that much satisfaction from it to be honest. I honestly wouldn't mind going back to a world of control decks that could sometimes use counter spells in them, but alas, we live in the Teferi world, and Teferi. Uh, well, at least it can do one interesting thing. If you don't have anything else to do with your Time Raveler, you can bounce your Blood Sun, <laughs> replay it to draw an additional card. Maybe while it's in your hand, you activate your one of Field of Ruin. I don't know. Skylands, uh, along with Blood Sun, are pretty awkward as well, and perhaps they shouldn't be in the deck. It's up for debate. But Brought Back is also in the deck, which means that uh, if our Teferis or Narsets die, perhaps we get them back but also a ramp spell, whereas if we play a Lotus Field and we have two extra mana, so this would be like turn four, we can use Brought Back to return the two lands to the battlefield, making our explosion greater at some point. Also good for bringing back an Ixalan's Binding, the opponent finally figured out how to remove. So, go America, we're gonna go play this deck uh, just before I launch into the game so I don't have to make any of my opponents wait uh, while I talk. There are two uh, new channels coming here from me, myself, CGB. There is uh, CGB Go For Go Blue Live, which is going to house replays from my Twitch streams. So hopefully you can enjoy those because I know that not many people enjoy the Twitch VODs or make use of them. So I'm going to, I made a YouTube channel just for those. The other YouTube channel that I made is for the Young CGB series, or as we're going to call it going forward, the free to play CGB series. And that's because Young CGB was confusing to uh, people outside the US, English not first language. They thought it meant the series was for kids. I got a lot of feedback like that. Whereas free to play CGB is pretty straightforward about what we're doing there. It's an account dedicated to playing Magic in free to play and uh, the best how I would approach the free to play format in Magic Arena. So that is one account that you can subscribe to, and the other one is Covert Go Blue Live, which you can subscribe to for live feeds. This deck, this this account will remain one like fully unlocked kind of competitive. Well, 
they, actually it runs the range. Sometimes it's competitive, sometimes it's janky. It's just kind of a new deck every day. And then the free to play account will be of course all episodes from the free to play series. And Covert Go Blue Live will be live streams brought over from Twitch. So you can subscribe to the channels that you like with the content that you enjoy and you don't have to get the feed absolutely cluttered with like three or four videos a day uh, from being subscribed to one channel. So uh, please check out the description and there will be links there to the different channels so you can subscribe to those if that's the content you want. As always, tell me what kind of content you want. You can leave comments on this video or you can go to the other channels and leave comments there. Now let's talk quickly about that Flipside Gaming giveaway and then let's play some games. Hey guys, let's take a quick break to talk about Flipside Gaming's core 2020 booster box giveaway. From now until July 15th, you can win an entire box of M20 for free if you follow these steps. Number one, find $10 or more worth of stuff at flipsidegaming.com that you like. Easy. They have singles, they have sealed product, and they have all the gaming supplies you need. So, number two. Use the promo code CGB before checkout. This saves you 10% and it supports the channel at the same time. Number three, complete your order. That's it. Even a mono red player can figure it out. <laughs> Please check out the links in the description to read the giveaways, rules, and conditions. And thank you for supporting the channel. May the best mage win. All right, we have Temple of Epiphany, Sacred Foundry. We don't have an early removal spell, but we're on the play with a Teferi, which I think makes it pretty good. We do have Blood Sun into the Lotus Field, which is very exciting. Let's go. I don't need to draw more land right now. What I really want, I think, are removal spells or more Planeswalkers, one of the two. So that's what we're looking for with our Temple. Like I said, don't need more land right this minute. So to the bottom with you. Here, kitty kitty. It's going to be my second day on the mastery system. The last video you saw was recorded the same day as my first day on the mastery system. Thank you for all your all your feedback on uh, the mastery system and my experience with the mastery system, I suppose. It was a little bit hard to hear. Some people seem to think that this is a review channel, that I'm giving a review of the Mastery System, and I think that nothing could be further from the truth. I was simply playing the game I love and reacting to what was happening to me on screen. Definitely not meant to be a serious critical review. Here's a Thought Erasure. I thought that might happen, which is why I put up two mana, so that I can use Expansion on the Thought Erasure. And Thought Erase my opponent as well. And we have one more land, an Elder Spell, a Narset, which I think does have to go, a Teferi, a Liliana, and a Kai's Wrath. So, goodbye Narset. The Elder Spell hitting my Teferi is sad, but it's not a big deal. Land on top? I don't believe I need that. Um, I'm interested if the opponent will take away the Blood Sun. I think they'll take the Time Raveler. It is too bad to have our expansion hit the graveyard. We'll really want to draw another one once we have the Lotus Field going. All right, so you can come down, you enter the battlefield, draw me a card, and Lotus Field is ready to go next turn. They could have taken the Blood Sun since they're holding an Elder Spell. I'm feeling a lack of respect for the power of the Lotus Field. And there we go. We got six mana now, which is pretty nice. Unfortunately, we're going to have to draw a way to use it. Another Thought Erasure off the top will let the opponent take away the Ixalan's Binding, most certainly. And they're going to dig for land. They keep it, so we know they're drawing their fourth land. But they still need a fifth one, at least. That's not a good draw. By the way, check out those entering the battlefield untapped Sacred Foundries. Isn't that glorious? Don't ask me to use my Field of Ruin. I can't right now. All it does is tap for one colorless mana. Ah, brought back. Don't know if you'll have a role to play anytime soon. It doesn't look like the draw is lining up the way we need it to. And it looks like instead we're going to get to ferry it into next week. Unless we draw really well. Right on schedule. Hurry! Mm-hmm. Two lands untapped, 
Time Raveler. What do you do? Not much, unfortunately. Okay, the opponent has something for instant speed there. What do you think that was? Hmm. I'm not sure. Something that could have targeted this? A D-Spark. They have a D-Spark because they could have targeted their own Teferi with it. Good to know what your opponents are up to when you can. Second Blood Sun. Okay. Alright, land. Keep it coming. We'll just double down on Blood Sun. Alright. It's a lot of land. This is definitely one of those games where you're just hoping, waiting, praying that you get to top deck the right card. We are in a bit of danger because of the Elder Spell and the Time Raveler. Our opponent is almost to where they can ultimate this to Fairy. Another Thought Erasure off the top for our third of the day. Doesn't look like this is one that is going to end well. The Lightning Strike is a pretty clear take. It means that the Elder Spell will ultimate the Teferi and even keep it around. The opponent might take Brot back because they fear shenanigans, but I don't think they have shenanigans to fear, to be honest. I think right here it's draw Expansion Explosion or this game ends in abysmal fashion. We could tuck our opponents to Fairy. I guess that could buy us more time. We can also Lightning Strike the Narset. Let's start there. I still have much to learn. I'm curious if the opponent will use their D Spark on this to Fairy, or if they'll just let the Elder Spell blow up both of these. But if they use the Elder Spell here then at least they won't let them ultimate something right away. So do they Elder Spell? Do they D-Spark? Do they Liliana? And it looks like it'll be the D-Spark. Saving the Elder Spell to try to do the ultimate trick with Teferi when it comes back around. That's also a good way to remove the Time Raveler. But now the opponent actually can't do the Elder Spell trick because there aren't enough Planeswalkers on the board. Still, probably a fine play. Hmm. Yeah, keep playing out your land. God knows, we just need to draw another explosion. Maybe that's asking a bit much in the top uh, 20 cards to draw two, but it's the way back, and the only way back that we have. That is a lot of land off the top here. Feeling the flood. Feeling the mighty flood. So we don't want a deafening clarion. Um, what we want to do, I guess, is try to draw an Narset. Could the opponent have ultimated that turn? You'll thank me later. They could have. They knew my card. They could have ultimated Liliana that turn by blowing up their own Teferi. But I guess a little greed doesn't kill him. Yep, not when I'm going to draw this way. So my opponent can definitely use Elder Spell to ultimate either Planeswalker. I'm going to have faith that they figure out how to do something like that, and I'm going to leave the game. No reason to sit around and let them dirtle me to death. Not on your time, viewers. I like your time. I'll try to take good care of it. <laughs> oh no. I don't know if we're gonna get to play the Blood Sun before we have to play a field. Oh. <laughs> YOLO. YOLO. If we find another land, we're in really good shape. If we don't, this will be a very quick game. That's not good. When it enters the battlefield tapped, when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice two lands. <laughs> Both lands would just die instantly. I guess we have to say go. Life is hard. Life is pain. Where are all those lands from my last game? Yep. Interesting to play a Styron Storm Tamer with a mana open. Perhaps we're protecting it with a dive down already because we're pretty low on threats. Nope. Storm Tamer down. Land. And now we ballers. Come on. That's too bad. So the center is the battlefield tapped, which means I do have to just pew <laughs> down to one. 
<laughs> Next turn, though, we can go for a Blood Sun and then a Lotus Field and then a Narset or another Blood Sun. But then with two Lotus Fields, we could cast an Awakened Inferno. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So we could also just play this Narset, but I really think I need the other Lotus Field so that I can have the Uncounterable Chandra next turn. Alright. Oh no. Wait. Uh, it says you can't sacrifice two other lands, but it's not legendary. So yes, I want to play it. Thank you. <laughs> nice little warning there, but I don't need it. So we can play this to at least play against Curious Obsession. And then next turn, the Chandra can take the opponent out. I think that that's a worthy play here, especially when we know it will resolve. <laughs> Search for Ascanta. Probably shouldn't be in the deck with Blood Sun. It's <laughs> pretty funny, um, like how I jammed a bad Jeskai shell into a new Jeskai shell. I kind of didn't think I would have this working the way it's working right now as often as I have so far, to be totally honest with you. So, does the opponent have a dive down? I mean, if they do, I'm pretty sure this will be an epic fail. So maybe the better play is to put it out there and just start ticking it up and try to kill the opponent. But I don't like that very much if I'm being real with all of you. It would have to have exactly a dive down. But this deck always has dive down. Always. All right. Let's see if they try to counter it. That would be nice. Oh, ho, ho. I didn't see that coming. I gotta, I gotta be quiet. I'll be quiet. My wife is sweet. My wife is sleeping upstairs. <laughs> Too exciting. <laughs> Good hand. Ready with my blood sun. Got my early burn spells. Looks like we're against red, so that's not that's not bad. Let's get our scry on. I don't think I need a land. Yeah. I it might come off greedy, but I think bottoming this is fine with three lands and uh, two ways to draw additional cards. And I don't have things that require double white. The, the mana is actually pretty friendly aside from exactly expansion explosion. Lotus Field sets you up pretty well for it. Okay. I guess I'll play you tapped. I could play this now. The opponent might just Wizard's Lightning me in response anyway. Let's see what they do here. There's a, there hasn't been much Jeskai control in the meta these days. Hmm. If the opponent lights up the stage, they may end up playing another creature anyway. But what is Shock good for? I think we may as well Shock this away now. And at least make light up the stage awkward. It also makes it like more likely that we can use our Teferi Time Raveler to bounce something next turn, although it looks like our opponent's going to shock their way to a stage. But that gives us a turn to play our Blood Sun, which probably hurts us more than our opponent. <laughs> although making your pain lands not painful is pretty cool. Are we playing you? What are we doing? What's the plan? Oh wow. Double light up the stage with Experimental Frenzy in the house. So. If our opponent plays a Frenzy, that's what we want to use our Time Raveler on. We just don't want them to play the Frenzy, though. It's possible that the right play is to play Teferi and plus it. That would kind of make the opponent go after the Teferi and not cast their Frenzy. But I guess if they cast him, we bounce it. Anyway, let's just drop the Blood Sun. Get a card deeper, save this for potentially the Experimental Frenzy. We have Ixalan's Binding, which would be the best thing to draw. Also another blue source. And we put one on the bottom. So we'll see what kind of greed comes back to bite us. Okay. The Frenzy is not happening. Instead, we'll see two attackers and a Wizard's Lightning. Makes Stephanie Clarion good. Ouch! Wow. All of the Clarion. All of them? Yes, all of the Clarions. They were all free anyway, right? <laughs> to light up the stages. Hmm. 
Oh, they're in the tank. And we has decided on a pyro. Third light up the stage. Must be nice. Hmm. I suppose this. One mana. Don't really want my opponent to utilize their wizard's lightning or whatever this turn, so I'm going to try saying go and at least try to take up their mana next turn. See what they do. I mean, I'm sure it's burn your face. I think we're at virtual four as it is. Opponent has seen five more cards in their deck than I have. GG, control mage. All right, so they didn't play Wizard's Lightning there, which tells me it's a shock. So we're at a virtual five that I can kind, I can pretty much count on. Let's take the blue source, hold on. Graveyard's not big enough, that's for sure. We can take the blue source, get the Narset going, try to find some ways back into the game. Unfortunately, we don't have creatures to attack with this with these clarions. Maybe Kefnet belongs in the deck. I mean, is that like how I do it? This can also tuck a frenzy, but if the opponent had a frenzy, I think they would have played it. This doesn't go for enough yet, I don't think. It's just not big enough. Let's take the Teferi. Shut up, cat. I know, rude. I'm just realizing how bad this deck probably is against red, since we just don't have counter spells or life gain. Alright, and here's the shock. No? I still think that their last card is a shock. Based on what we've seen. Field of Ruin, you're not it. Delightful Nambos up and down. Now we'll take you, I suppose. Here's the fairy. I know my responsibility. Let's skip to the good part. I think the opponent's just playing on full control. I think they're tryharding their platinum status. Now I can't put them on a shock because I think they're just spamming full control mode. Which is too bad. <laughs> Not as fun. Um, you can graveyard. There's another Narset. The sad thing is we're still eventually dead. <laughs> I don't know how I'm ever going to get there. I guess I need more expansion explosions and I already bottomed one. Bottomed. Bottomed? Bottomed. So now I'm looking for any and all burn spells, and that's how I get there? Warn our set? Sure. Let's try you. I think picking up the Blood Sun is fine. Now the opponent wants to be instant speed. I mean... <laughs> Isn't that nice? Yeah, let's try it out. It'll be pretty bad against a red deck, but I just played a red deck. All right, this is pretty good against a red deck now. <laughs> At least we have some early removal. I don't think we beat red no matter what we do, though, uh, in the current iteration, because I'm just not life gaining. Now, there's a thing that pretty much always has to die. It has been my experience playing against vampires is that thing must die. So we've already got the mana for brought back. If we draw a, a um, what is it, the Lotus Field, we're in good shape. Curious what the opponent will do. If they have a Lord, I think that has to die more than the Knight. Hmm. I think it has to die more than the Knight. Knight can hit really hard though. 
We'll see. I may regret this. This is definitely a matchup to draw Deafening Clarion, though. Okay. That feels nice. Well, you know, nice in such that it's kind of dirty and disgusting and should never have been printed, but, you know, when you're the one doing it and you really needed it. It's kind of just gross, really, though. <laughs> Feel a little bad. Right? Well, that's a good card against Teferi in that at least it has value. When it enters the battlefield... Oh, what to do. So, I really think I should just play the other Teferi and try to get closer to hitting a land drop. I'll protect you. Just keep driving my opponent crazy. Possibly see them concede in anger. Okay. Fourth land, no thank ya. Navern Fane, definitely something that can eat a shock. Although we have this expansion explosion to go with this shock, so I think that's the plan. I don't think this is an Ixalan's Binding kind of moment. Let's pass it over and see what the opponent plays. They might play something like a Legion Lieutenant. They might play out the Knight of the Ebon Legion early. I guess the Knight of the Ebon Legion is another thing I really want to kill. Okay, sell it, sure. So these are just 1 ones, but when there's four of them, I guess that's a big problem. Let's go ahead and do this now. As much as I'd like to kill this knight, not gonna do it that way. Gonna end up taking out just one of these little token guys instead. Because we don't know if or when we'll draw a Deafening Clarion. Ah, uh, Danto. That is a card worth Ixalan's Binding, that is for sure. <laughs> Paying for life won't help you. One of the more annoying cards we can face, too, so if we gotta bind something, that is a good one. The Vampire deck certainly had a boost in power from the new cards, but we haven't seen Soren yet. Maybe we will now. Instead, it's another Legion Lieutenant to get in there for four and boost the Ebon Legion. So this is where you need your Deafening Clarion. The brought back is definitely not looking like a good card yet. These are going to come in tapped. God, that's rough. Hold on. I'm doing it wrong. It needs to be white, white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I'm at ten. I've lost the game. Looks like it. The only way I can stay in the game is if the opponent somehow plays a very poor um, card that I can use with the um, expansion explosion. Okay, so sack these. They brought back. Resolve. Uh, enters tapped. Scry. No thank you. And we need our opponent to, I'm not sure what, cast something they should not cast. Maybe a Mortify targeting the Ixalan's Binding would do. <laughs> Johnny won't be it either. I understand you are in need of support. Look how far you have come. All right. Call it a wrap on that. <laughs> Well, our Jeskai Lotus Chandra deck took a bit of a drubbing today. Maybe we can go have a look at how I would play it differently. And you who stayed till the end, well, you can always put stayed till the end to make me feel good in chat. But what are we missing? Well, for one thing, we don't have ways to gain any life. 
That was definitely an exposed weakness against Mono Red. Some people like Revitalize. I do not enjoy Revitalize. I think that it's much better to play the Deafening Clarion combo um, with something that can gain you a lot of life. Perhaps Crackling Drake wants the job. And get some creatures into our deck along with some Kefnet because I love that card. Some other cards that definitely didn't cut it, Sertra's Kanta is certainly a Nambo with the Blood Sun, and the brought back never served me in the way that I think I was hoping it would. I do like Teferi Time Raveler with the Blood Sun, just because you can bounce it and replay it. I don't know that four of these Teferis is necessary, and you could probably run more of these Chandras, which I enjoy quite a bit. We didn't quite, quite get to see a very large explosion. Yeah, let's trim on that a little bit more. I wonder if playing one more game or two would help us out and maybe we'd just have a better feel about the red, white, and blue at the end of the day. I'm also going to trim the Field of Ruin because it made me sad that it just never really did its thing. Now that we have um, Crackling Drake in the mix, let's get another blue source into the deck. And yeah, I think we'll just do this. All right. I think we'll try for one more, because I want the red, white, and blue to feel a little bit more successful on the 4th of July. I bet it can get me a win. I bet it can. I bet it can. Either way, it's the last game. If we get mana screwed or whatever, I'm not cutting it. One time for the red, white, and blue. Let's go. And is pretty close to what we need. We'll need one more land to play the Lotus Field without having anything go wrong. We have some shocks to hold the fort, so I love it. And the Temple of Triumph hopefully can find exactly that land that we need. Beep. I think I'm putting any non-land to the bottom just to make sure I get to do what my deck wants to do. I might miss that Crackling Drake later, but we'll see. Blue. Blue doing what? There's that land. Hopefully it's not going to be like Spell Pierce Your Blood Sun kind of craziness. I could have held up Expansion. Maybe I'll end up regretting this. Let's get move into full control mode. We want to make sure that we uh, get a stop here. We can also do it like this. But resolve. And shock this before our opponent untaps and can possibly defend that creature with a dive down or something of that nature. If you don't put the stop on or enter full control by hitting the control key, it will just skip the end of turn, the opponent will untap their mana, and then they might just kill your stuff. It sucks. What do you think? Are they going to let Blood Sun resolve? It would be a weird thing to Spell Pierce, right? If they do use a Spell Pierce on it, I guess I'm not even upset. And it's a blind Cutthroat, which makes me sad. This is a very annoying creature to deal with. Whenever you cast a spell during an opponent's turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Brine Cutthroat. Fortunately, we've got some we got some tools. We're ready for we're ready for battle now. Got a lot of lands doing a lot of things. Let's see if the opponent plays a card here or no. No! They're digging for a land. So we can guess they have five cards that are not lands here. Otherwise they play this on our turn. Ooh, a field. Alright. I think the opponent will try to pump this. We could go for the Clarion. And when they try to do something to save it or counter this, we could shock in response. I guess I like that. Let's add all red. I really want to pave the way for an expansion ex for an explosion. So I want my opponent to tap out for a Tempest Shin after this dies and then I can explode it for a very, very large amount. Whoa, that went easier than I expected. Is it going to be, looks like another creature perhaps. So I put the stop on the end step. I also hit full control just to be sure. So critical that we do this while our opponent doesn't have mana and keep our opponent playing cards on our, you know, playing around, like if they have dive downs, counter spells, they just sit in the hand, hopefully, get the opponent to tap out, explode the hell out of them. Two Lotus Fields online. And what's it gonna be? 
opt, sure. I hope our opponent goes for a trickster here. Please keep on top and play a creature. Scries to the bottom, does not play a creature. We want to do everything we can to keep this from being countered. Um, this is where Baby Teferi is actually really good against Mono Blue. Alright, maybe our opponent will play something here. Nope, not yet. We'll just keep waiting then. Siren Storm Tamer. Can we get our opponent to flinch? Hmm. So the only thing they probably have here is like a spell pierce, and well, they might have a negate. Let's check. This is exactly what you want to do against them. They have to respond. And it is a spell pierce. I will pay two. I have lots of mana. I know my responsibility. So the question here is, does the opponent have, like a spectral sailor, something to attack the Teferi? I doubt it. But I'm going to use the plus. I can always bounce the Blood Sun later. I don't have to be in a rush to get that bonus Blood Sun card, and there's no reason to expose it to a Flash Spectral Sailor that could just come over and kill it, and I wouldn't want to spend my explosion on such a small creature. Now that we have Teferi, this is going to resolve. Wow. Okay. So with Teferi on the board, six cards in hand, the opponent scoops. I guess they could have deduced we had an expansion based on the stick when we played a spell, but still, that's a, that's a pretty aggressive scoop. But little Teferi does that to Mono Blue. Well, we believed in the red, white, and blue, and it at least got us our Platinum 1 status back. So, uh, the Lotus Chandra deck with a few revisions I think can be a lot better off. It was my first time playing through the whole deck, and I certainly learned some good things about it. It's all part of the testing process. Early in the format, when I'm showing you my own brews, I often haven't had a ton of time to play them, and especially with this holiday weekend, I haven't had a lot of time to play this deck, so I'm learning on the fly, and hopefully you'll be patient and understand that when you leave me the comments telling me how bad my deck building is and how what a disgusting player I can be. So, um, <laughs> whatever you need to do, I suppose. But uh, this deck may have some potential beyond where I'm at. Blood Sun and Lotus Field came together a lot more than I thought. I want to remind you that you can go check out the free-to-play CGB account and the CGB Live account and subscribe to those if you're interested in more content from me in addition to our daily decks which are on this channel. Check out the description for that. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.